Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Monday, it is July 25th and welcome to a new week, welcome to a new day. I hope that you had a great weekend and that you've got something fun planned for this week. Uh, you know, we read the news stories every day uh, to bring you up to speed on what's going on in the big world, but I know that all of you have your own lives, you're dealing with different situations, different um, realities, and m more than anything, I just want to make you feel welcome here um, to, to get some context in your life for the things that you may be facing. You know, you're kind of a your microcosm of the bigger, bigger world, and um, I think knowing that you're not alone and that you've got people here by your side um, is really important. So please, as I read these news items every day, feel free to comment, share what's going on in your world and, um, you know, start a conversation. Um, I'm here today with my tea. I have got my uh, green tea today. It's my um, it's my standby. I really love green tea and there's so many kinds of green tea. Um, maybe you have a favorite that you could share as well. That'd be great. But um, anyway, tea, happy morning and uh, settle down, get a cup of tea or coffee and um, I'll bring you up to speed on what's been going on in the world and uh, get us ready for a new week. So the first thing to report is regards to the Olympics. Now, um, the Olympic um, Committee, International Olympic Committee, has made a decision not to um, uh, impose a blanket ban on the Russian um, athletes who um, were planning to attend. Um, as you know, there has been some controversy over the fact that um, there's been claims that there was state-run or state-supported um, use of um, performance-enhancing drugs, and uh, the, um, the Olympic Committee decided that rather than making a blanket uh, decision that no one could attend, they're going to leave it up to the individual sports. So the um, track and field um, uh, athletes, for example, have already been sanctioned, so they cannot attend. But other other one of the sports are being um, able to, um, to to apply based on the individual uh, record of the um, athletes. So they've got 12 days now to sort of get their act together and um, uh, do all the necessary tests so that people can be allowed um, to, to join the Olympics in Rio. Um, the other thing that uh, is happening this week is the U.S. Democratic uh, Convention is starting and it's already off to um, a bit of controversy and uh, a little embarrassment um, with the resignation of the Democratic National um, uh, Committee's chairman, chairwoman. Her name is uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Um, there was um, a, a, there's been a little uh, re re revelation of emails that the committee uh, shared, um, really trying to undermine the primary campaign of Bernie Sol Saunders. Now, um, these are things that they purportedly did to try to um, undermine him in states where he um, where he could have been, you know, he could have won. So, um, and Bernie Saunders actually, as you know, has already endorsed Hillary Saun uh, Clinton. So he's going to be speaking today at the convention, and I'm sure that they're going to be presenting a very united front. But Debbie Wasserman Schultz has resigned, and um, new new person will be assigned to that role of uh, Democratic National Committee. Uh, chairperson. Um, and another thing to, to tell you about is, of course, um, we've over the weekend spoke about the situation in Germany. And unfortunately, I have one more story to tell you this today. Uh, last night, um, a, a man blew himself up outside a, a restaurant after trying to get into a, um, a music festival. He had a bomb. And of course, they don't know at this point what his motives were, whether it was to kill himself or to hurt others. But he did die. He, he blew himself up when he couldn't get into the festival and um, you know another person with a very troubled background he was a Syrian refugee uh, denied uh, entry to Germany but allowed to stay last year and um, another case really of a very troubled individual who uh, had had psychiatric uh, treatment and who uh, had tried to commit suicide a couple of times uh, you know, Germany's had three um, uh, situations like this in the last week, and I mean, obviously, our hearts go out to the uh, the average person who is so affected by these types of uh, random uh, attacks. Uh, the last two have not been uh, related to terrorism, so that has been said. But they, um, you know, they obviously um, are the the result of uh, people who are very, um, you know, mentally unstable, and um, it's very sad for Germany. But um, those are those are some things that are happening. And I feel that's important to tell you these things because 
Um, you know, the world is a fragile place and we have to do everything we can, in my opinion, to bring positivity to the world. We cannot stop believing in each other and believing, in my opinion, in the basic goodness of people. We just have to keep uh, stay strong. Um, so um, I found a, a fun article. I just wanted to share this one with you. Maybe it'll make you smile a bit. Maybe it'll make you scratch your head. But it's a it's a one from uh, Australia, and this is some research done by the Melbourne Institute of Applied Economic and Social Research. And what they did is came up with the theory that people over forty should not work more than twenty five hours a week. The reason is that our brains change. We've talked about this, you know, in certain ways, maybe memory function or other, other things change. And um, we uh, are, in their opinion, not, it's not good to work more than 25 hours because it stresses our brain and our body, causes an unhealthy lifestyle. Now, of course, a lot of people in their 60s are doing more than two or three jobs, uh, caregivers, uh, looking after you know, adult children, maybe dealing with, a, with a, an illness. You know, you are, some people are doing basically two or three jobs. So it's, it's interesting that they put the limit at 25 or three days part-time work. I always love these kinds of research projects because they're in some ways very interesting that they teach us about something we don't understand, our brain. But on the other hand, they're very, um, well, they're just unrealistic. I mean, for example, um, a lot of women, as we know, are living longer now in their 70s and having to work full time in order to, uh, to, to, you know, to pay their way. And so I guess it's a question of, you know, are you, are you more stressed because you're working too long or more stressed because you're not able to, to you know, live in a good home or, or uh, afford food? It's kind of an interesting decision <laughs> you have to make. But anyway, I love this kind of research and it makes us think about how others are you know, doing work to see how the aging brain and the aging body uh, can be enhanced and supported. So I think I'll take a positive note on, on their work. Um, there's one final story I wanna share with you. Um, and by the way, before I do that, I want to, rec to say to you that um, if you, if you are supporting what we're doing here on Mornings with 60 and Me and you enjoy this um, every day, this news uh, chat, um, please go to 60andme.com forward slash mornings and just sign up and um, get the news first. Let us know that you support what we're doing and um, you know just be, just be engaged. Let, you know, give us your, your support and um, that would be great. I would really appreciate that. So that's 60andme forward slash 60me.com forward slash mornings. So one last story, which I know will make you smile. It made me laugh. <laughs> this is an article on BuzzFeed, which is a great little site for all kinds of um, just interesting, curious uh, news stories. And this was about insane things that were acceptable in the 1960s. Do you remember the 60s? We were all in our 20s in the 60s and we were doing crazy things that were considered totally acceptable. And I'll just give you a few and then you can read the article and uh, get the rest, it's kind of fun. So first thing we used to do, which was totally insane, was iron our hair. Did anybody else do this? I did this. <laughs> I can't believe I actually did. I had very long hair down to my waist. It was it was nice dark brown as my natural color. And um, yeah, and so I used to iron my hair. And every day I would ask my mom, I'd get the ironing board out and, and the iron, very low heat. And she would iron my hair, poor thing. And you know, she was, it was like, that was what everyone was doing to get that straight look. I think I was trying to be Cher, but anyway, it was uh, it was just one of those things we accepted, no problem. Um, th there's another thing they mentioned, which is Tang, T-A-N-G, Tang was acceptable as an alternative for orange juice. You know, I never drank Tang, did you? But apparently it's, it's not, orange juice at all but it's just a powdered drink and it was very very popular and um, it was insane to think that it was good for you I guess although the tang people I'm sure would tell you it is or maybe it was um, third thing that they say was totally insane was that smoking was allowed on planes do you remember that I mean I can remember that when it was allowed in the back of the plane after takeoff and this little smoke um, you know bubble or <laughs> smoke cloud would come down from the back seats and we all just kind of accepted it it was totally crazy but we um we allowed it to be in our world. Um, cars did not have seatbelts. 
you know, I remember the buckle up for safety campaign that, that came out where seat belts became really important, but early, you know, cars didn't have them. So I think that was really important. And there were some other funny ones like Jello was a big thing and people used to eat Jello for, you know, salads with salads for desserts. And, and I remember the hundreds of flavors of Jello and um, yeah, I remember being a Jello fan. Did you? Were you? But these are some of the things that honestly were just so acceptable in the 60s and now are just considered a little bit crazy. Maybe not the jello. But anyway, that's uh, this fun article. And as I was reading it, I was thinking, well, that were those were things that we did have in the 60s. What didn't we have? Well, we didn't have the internet and we didn't have smartphones. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, it's such a different world now. I honestly don't know how I would cope without the internet. And I really carry my phone everywhere. I mean, how about you? It is, they both have become such a part of our life. But I'd like to ask a question and, and you know, just get us to, to think about that, that time in our life and which, whether we think things have improved, evolved or, or not. So the question I'd like to ask you is, what do you miss most about life in the 60s? And if, I guess the other part is if you could go back to that time, would you? I just think it's a real, I'd love to get a conversation going on this. I think it's a really interesting point. Um, you know, what do you miss most about life in the, in the 60s? And if you could go back, would you? Leave your comments below and, and we'll have a conversation and just start a dialogue on, on how things have changed in our lives, hopefully for the better. So have a great day, everybody. Have a wonderful week. And um, I'll speak with you again tomorrow morning, uh, same time for Mornings with 60 in May. Thanks, everyone. Take good care.